Okay, this is a long story that I don't want to go into, but I just want to record this. Just in case I have to date the photos, I've only just decided to try and record it, right? It's 2.40, Wednesday, 29th of September. I thought this was a miracle. Well, it is a miracle, but it's quite possibly um, explainable. I'm scribing, okay, I end up googling Aramoana, which is on the map, and then I see home, so I go home. Home is 32 Kefner Street. See? I have screenshots, so it might be easier to just go through screenshots. You don't want to be bored with this. But I will just show you what happens so you understand. Okay, so here we go. You watching? This is home. There's a few things I've noticed in screenshot. I noticed my trellis. There's three bits of trellis. I built all this, right? They added this garden. This is 2021. Then I noticed, so this is a PVC fence, it's the same as at Casimir and Rainbow. So it's 2021, but I noticed that the blossoms are out. See that, that tiny tree? I planted it on the hill above the waterfall. In front of that is the love seat. Against the fence is the cactus garden. This cactus flowers. It's got flowers. The blossom tree blossoms in September. It's got blossoms. So I planted that tree. It's going to be very big. It has blossoms. So this Google Earth must have been done, I believe, in September. Now... Right now, I'm not sure, I don't know how to find out what date, okay? So what's the chances I go there? I'm not going, I can't go in. These are the new buyers. They're, the, it's a couple without children. She's a gym bunny. He's a headhunters member. Yes. This is my, this is the number of the house. I don't know if it, that comes up. 32 in gold. This is the neighbours. They still own that place. That's their car, their Honda. We went to Aerosmith. Well, no, we went to Black Sabbath in Dunedin in that car. And that's when they persecuted me. That camper belongs to their parents. Don't live there, but it sits there. There is, I believe, there's one extra boy here. But there's three boys that live there. There they go on the street. There's the three boys that, that live on, that basically hang out on the street. I don't know. The extra one could be the girl that lives down the road, a young girl. She plays with them. So there's three boys. One, that's definitely one. That's definitely the other. And not sure about that one and that one. But there are three boys, okay? So this, these are the people in your neighborhood. So this is right now. That is my next door neighbor's opposite car, right? would that be? Would that be a reflection? What would that be? That there. It's very strange, isn't it?
It's not like a normal shadow on the road, is it? Can you see it? I remember them putting that that in, these grates, after the earthquake. What's that shadow? Oh, sorry. Do you see what I mean? So anyway, when I was looking at the kids, the other thing I noticed was these, this is what Gary had just mentioned, that they've got these on our power line, on our lights. There's little black dots. The easiest way for me to sum it up was he basically said that he watched a YouTube video of the guy who basically was behind the technology behind those. And without getting into detail of what other things they do, it's basically that technology that um, you use for riots. So there's a sound. It's direct in energy weapon. There's a sound, and it will disperse the crowd. But also he, he said something about that mixed with what's in our blood, not mine, I hope, could be complete switch off or control right so they've got those on the lights now okay so that's the lady who lives across the road and then when I was watching this I realized that's Angela so I don't know his name but there's Angela and her three boys one of those boys I took to the museum in Dunedin they came to the house a few times that's their two cars so I still have the same neighbors there Okay, that's home. This, because I saw this, I was looking at this. I was going to show you stills. I've got, got stills of everything for the timing. See in the window? That's Angela. She's in the window. So Angela's in the picture. Angela's in the picture. Got that. They just rent there. So before the earthquakes, the lady who owned that house just ran. She just ran. And in the end, she sold it very cheaply, never got it fixed up, never worked through the insurance. Basically, that house will need to be torn down in about maybe seven years because they gave us 15 years to the house, if the house isn't engineer, engineerly, in, engineered underneath, because this is all liquefaction under here, then you have the option. It's lost its value, but you can, you know, just gain rent from it as long as it's safe to live in. But you will have to tear it down because it won't meet the building requirements. Okay, so we... Being private owners we, and not afraid, we had ours rebuilt. There we go. There's the house rebuilt. Okay, it's 32. I know it's Angel. Okay, I think that's all I'm going to show you. And then I'm going to show you this. See, I was looking at it. I was looking at this, our house. And then I went, oh, I wonder what's happening next door, across the road, right? And I went down here, watch this. Right, what happened? Look. See? Do you notice? Look at the fence. That is the basketball hoop belongs to the kids. Okay, watch the fence. We went back in time. Okay, so there's an explanation for it. But I was shocked because I didn't realise we went back in time. All I thought was the light changed. Do you understand that? So I'm watching it now. Try. I, I, went, round the, I went to turn around to see the neighbour's house. And look, I didn't see the neighbor's house, honest. The first thing I'm recording, so I'm writing down here what I can see. 
the first, but I will show you this now that I've gone there. That's the neighbor's house. The neighbor ha neighbor's house is designed similar to our old house, as in it's shaped like this with an apex. When the earthquake hit the house on the opposite side, the earthquake came this way, the shutter, it took that beam out, you know those A-frame beams? It took that one that goes back, that supports that, and then on the other side it took that one out, and I discovered it when I went into the roof. And I got Amy's boyfriend, Ben, she was, Amy was 17, 18, 17, 18. I got her boyfriend, Ben, who was a builder, to come and fix it. I wasn't a builder then, and he put, he just did a temporary fix, because we never got anyone to check our houses. We had to check our own houses. Marty was at work. I did it. I crawled under the house as well. And there were holes, sinkholes under the house. So this now, we've gone back in time to before the earthquakes. This is significant. I don't, for I know it is. Now I remember thinking, oh, they've got a boat now. When I went there, I thought, oh, Angela's got a boat now. That's what I thought. And I thought, I wonder what number. And then I realised I couldn't find the letterbox anymore because before when we were here see see the light there's a letterbox I'd looked at the letterbox and I couldn't read the number and now we're back in time and there's no letterbox but these are her Elsa they're German shepherds and I never realized how significant that was they had German shepherds you know that the German Shepherd is the symbol that the Lord has used in my dream of Satan. That he will tie that dog up. Notice there's two. So there was one woman living in this house and her husband. I never really got to know the husband. I did back into their car and that would be the main conversation I had. I backed into their car at Christmas time. That car there, they had it parked here. And I pulled out, and I'll show you where I am. You're going to sit, now you're going to sit, you're going back in time before the earthquakes. Isn't this cool? I think it's cool. So there's the empty section across the road. That's my old car, my Toyota Estima. I bought that car when at an auction when my husband cast me out. I lived in a house and um, I had the children just in the weekends and I was a full-time teacher and I went and bought that car. It's a Toyota Steam. It has a, a rooftop. The kids used to get in it. I used to have to carry teenagers in it. Right, so here I am, right? I went to the end of the fence to have a look at the neighbours but I ended up looking at this house and thinking, this is a neighbour's house. And I, honest to God, started writing this book. The neighbour's house is a, 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 a mirror of our house. Look, I looked at it and I went, even the plants are the same. It's a mirror of our house. I didn't realise I'd gone back in time with Google. So this is my daughter's bedroom. There's no one in the window. That's my daughter's bedroom, right? We were offset from the house, from the road further, you know, because that house got pulled down. That was the old driveway just where I parked. And my husband used to go up that driveway. Right now, as soon as I try and get close, because look, there's the neighbor's house. They got rebuilt as well. If I do this, you can see, right? And there's the neighbor's old car. They, what happened is our next door neighbors we had rebuilt the house, sold it, and they were the next door neighbours that we got to know that he had a spare ticket, we went to Dunedin, all four of us in their orange car, and him had a spare ticket to Black Sabbath. And Marty went to Black Sabbath and I didn't go. I stayed back with the girl that lived that lived there. She was so pregnant she couldn't use her ticket. We went to the pictures. And I can't the Lord, if it's important, I'll recall the movie. It sounds stupid, but really honest, you'd be surprised. 
He said he would fill in the details, okay? So pay attention, even right now. So anyway, when I'm looking at this, when I suddenly realize, because I was saying things like, oh, the inside of that house is completely the same structure as our house. Well, it is our house, okay? So here I am thinking, oh, there goes a motorbike. I was thinking, is that my sister's, my daughter's motorbike? This looks like it might be a motorbike at the fence. That's a gate. It's not. It's winter. Someone's got a hat on. And see that little dog? That's Peppa. That's me, Lean. That's me. I think it's me. I think it's me. And those those are children. That would be Joshua. I think it's me. I think it's just me, Joshua and Pepper at the gate. See, the quality is not as good. I mean, right? So I've tried. See, it's a dead end street. We live at a dead end street. I can switch back. See, I'm back there. Did you see that? Isn't that just so super cool? Isn't that cool? Look. Why don't you try it? See if it happens to you. Or see if it's just some... It's about time. The last thing I talked about on Messenger was time. So, I've just gone out. I may never be able to get back there. Do you understand that? It may never happen again. This is what I googled to get here. Aramoana... But I found out there's an Aramana beach in Hawke's Bay. And then I looked at the images. And I just want to show you this image. I don't want to say too much. There's three photos. This one caught my attention. See the boulders in the pyramid? in Hawke's Bay so that's how I got there you just got to understand that's how I got there I went like this to find out where this place was see the mountain Hawke's Bay is in the North Island see and then I'm just taking you backwards then I just I wondered first I wondered why is this here this arrow see look there's my home there's my home, 32 Caithness Street. That's where I live, on the east. The sun comes up on the east, over to the west. I knew a man in church, Christian City Church, CCC, who is dead now, who saw a tidal wave. He swore he saw a tidal wave here. And then he's passed away with cancer. That was before my first marriage breakup. I'm just going to say that because... Okay, I'm just going to show you. That's where I was working. See here it says work? I was building a house here at Sovereign Palms. So I was driving to work. That was before I went up the mountain. I've obviously, Google knows these things about me from back then. You got that? So that is Christchurch. Christchurch is apparently the inside, middle of a volcano. So I want to show you Dunedin just before we finish. This is Dunedin. 
So this is taking me full circle to a place called Aramoana. Okay, so there's Dunedin City. In Dunedin City, there's a countdown that this year a man went crazy with a knife and stabbed nine, uh, six people. And in the North Island, a man went crazy with a knife, but he was... He had a motive, even though the government didn't want it. He went up Buckner. Do you know what I mean? He did it in the name of. And he stabbed six people at the countdown. It's the same as in the South Island, three children, girls, one twin, one set of twins were murdered. I found that out on the 17th of September. And then in the North Island, that was a mother murdered the children. And in the North Island, the father ended up at a beach and that's why I wanted to look at that beach Aramoana and it's Shoal Beach Shoal as in Shoal to me it was about Shoal like the underworld anyway he was at a beach in the North Island and he was apparently white baiting but they disappeared and I don't know if they've been found but it had already been 10 days when I finally heard that news so three children have been have disappeared, and the 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 premise is that he's done something to them and himself. They have disappeared. Three children, and a father. Three children and a mother. And when the father came home and found the children in the house number seventeen across from Timaru Hospital, which is like I just showed you, Timaru Hospital is between. Christchurch and Dunedin, here, Timaru. When my mother died in that hospital, 2018. Right, let me just show you the landscape of Dunedin because this is where my communist invasion dream started. It was in Dunedin. So I'll start by showing you the communist invasion. So this is the harbour, this is flat, that's the countdown where six were stabbed. Direct pressure was given by, by bystanders with a pack and save bag, not just a bag, you know, a shopping bag. Up north, when the stabbing happened, I heard on the news that direct pressure was given by people were grabbing nappies and tea towels. Well, I had the dream with Jeff Briley where he got stabbed in the neck. Because this man, they, they were talking about stab wounds. Stabbed in the neck. And I used a tea towel. So the, the significant events, they're like, they could be the kickoff events. The Lord said that he was going to give, there was going to be three sets of three kickoff events. Three sets of three kickoff events. And I'm in a place now where I'm scribing and I'm inquiring of the Lord. And he, I, I will read this later at some stage. He is saying that he, because he, then he said that he has his kickoff events. Now he didn't say there was three sets of three. He said there were three of them. One set of three. His kickoff events. One set of three. They're very light containers, tip top ice cream containers. He showed me under, he put it under my nose and showed me what was in it. It looked like a sparkly light cellophane he said it's a game you play outside took it outside put it on the ground and you can kick it it's that light with sandals he was wearing his sandals it's a fun game anyway could this be that we're in this place for the kickoff event right now i just want to show you where i was where i was there's this is a main road where we um, main motorway. Here is motorway. Highway 1. It's called Liberton. I don't know. When I lived in Dunedin, I was a student with no car. I've hardly driven around Dunedin. I must have been somewhere up here. I've never looked at the map. I was at this, I must have been at this reserve. It's not very big though, is it? It's a, it was, 
there was a house that was my home. Okay, I'm telling you now. Okay, it started. I was looking for, oh my God. You know how I've just showed you my home? I was looking through one of those fisheye lenses that you have on a door, at, through the ranch slider door on the back door of the new build. You've just seen the old build and the new build, right? I was looking through the hole in the back of the door, but it's a ranch slider. It's not like a solid door that has a wee peephole, but that's what I was looking through. And I could see it was my home. I was a bride. It was my home. It was the groom's home, but the family wasn't mine. That's how my communist invasion and people were coming to the opposite slide door coming to visit for extended family people were coming into the family home it was the false church though and then next thing i was inside it i was sitting at the couch the people were sitting across from me they were they were my relatives were supposed to be my family but i was i was they were estranged from me i walked to the kitchen and they passed by me and they looked at me with detest so I left the house. The groom, I didn't see the groom. He was out bringing more in. You know, the groom, the false bride, the red wedding. He was out bringing more in. I left, I went up the hill. So this is where I am. <clears throat> There's a house, but I'm up the hill. And this is a vantage point. I'm in Dunedin looking from a spot like this. How do I know it's like this? It's sort of a hill because from where I'm sitting, I can see this tight bend. See this tight bend, Highway 1? There's a roadblock there. When I go up the hill, so let's just say it is that reserve. It's called Pine Hill. It's called Pine Hill. Oh, my God, no. So it could be anywhere there. You know, whatever's that, if I looked at the contours, there's a high point where, from where I am, I would be able to see down there to the main road, the main highway, plus I'd be able to see, this is what I could see, I could see that harbour there. See that harbour there? See that harbour there? It's called Purukanui. That's where I saw. I went up to a bus. A little girl came from the house. She came and joined me at the bus. She gave me the picture. I put it on my blind of... Obama bear moving up and down and there were three reindeer I knew there were reindeer I confused myself with I pet goat and the buck moon and all that because there's a reindeer there's deers but I'm I'm sure there were reindeers it was my first thought three of them and they were upright but they're very close and you could closely they were cut like a photo as in you could just see their head and eyes and their um, horns stag horns they were stags, they weren't the, the female ones. I've talked to Gary about them, he knows what they were. Right, so you understand, I, I can see that highway. I'll stand about here for the photo. I can see that highway, North Dunedin. I can see that highway, main motorway out. It's the only one out. The only way in is the only way out. That's where they put the roadblocks. I went up here. From the house, I'm in the bus. The little girl's giving me the picture. We're both standing at the door now of the bus. I end up outside. It's night time. When I saw the roadblocks, it was night time. I could see all the flashing emergency lights, people being stopped. I looked out towards this harbour, and it's significant. Puakanui is round the corner from Aramoana. See Aramoana? I'm describing about Aramoana. There's Aramoana. That's where the hero is. The hero is a bummer. He's the hero, the Antichrist. The hero. He saved me. He's one of my three crushes. He's the peacock. The peacock who played Joseph. Donny Osmond. His favourite colour is purple. The Lord gave me three crushes. Every one of them points to a bummer. Just like the three kings that I saw riding, when I opened my eye from this dream I'm sharing, I had an open eye vision, a close eye vision, and I thought, saw three kings by the lake in Santa Claus, and they got on their horses and rode. They're all the same king. They're all Obama. He's the one in charge. One's Trump, 
and the second one was Biden, and then there was Obama, but they were all on the horse at the same time. We've heard this over and over again, but this is our Moana. The rock with the hole in it. I was trying to get to the rock with the hole in it, and I was saved, and I had a crush on this young boy, who's 16, who did it. Who wouldn't? A girl at eight. Massive crush. And he was he was a Broadway singer. He didn't make it to Broadway. He lives in Australia. His name is Derek Megster. And he's so he's also my cousin. But he's a Broadway singer. There's the narrow way and there's the broad way. That's what the Lord's showing me about his name. Right, so now we've got to get back to here. Why are we looking at Perkinui? Okay. Potato Point, Long Beach. Okay, see that place, Long Beach? In my testimony, the night that I went to church in the morning and I had an open eye vision of the glory. This is my only open eye. The glory. And the Lord played movies and quickened just the most beautiful things to me. He, he showed me that he'd always known me. I was at Long Beach. See Long Beach? It was Jan the, the last Sunday in January 1994. I got saved. The last Sunday in January 1994. I can find the date. It was a Sunday. I went to church in the morning. Well, on New Year's Eve, I went out for the first time. I was a single mum. And I ended up in Port Chalmers with my friend. And we got in these cars and we went to Long Beach to a bonfire. Massive bonfire. It ended up that it was midnight. Everyone disappeared. It's like there's hardly any cribs or cottages here. They all disappeared. It was the worst night. I just I was lonely. I didn't want to find a man, and I didn't, thank goodness, but through God's grace, because I hadn't gone out at all. Amy was born in May, and I hadn't been out, and it was now Christmas, socially. And I was a single woman. But I was not a Christian. I didn't get picked up that night, which was fantastic. I was looking at the bonfire and the sparks flying off. And that's what the Lord reminded me of. So when I saw the glory, he said, it's just a spark. And he showed me that he showed me standing in front of the bonfire. And how I was watching the sparks float away from this great mighty source of fire watching them and, and it was one spark that was in my bedroom one spark I saw one spark of his power right I'm going to run out of time but here I am right up here in the communist invasion dream so I'm outside I'm sorry but I saw the roadblock but it wasn't the first thing I saw the first thing I saw was New Year's Eve fireworks I knew it was New Year's Eve because it was a tweet from Mariah Carey that I'd seen before. I had this vision on either, either on the 6th or the 9th of January 20, when, when we moved from 2019 into 2020, right? Before the virus started, before. I think I may have seen something about China. A lot of people were looking early. Of course I was looking early, something. But there was no alert. The first thing I saw was a tweet that I'd seen on New Year's Eve because I was watching Mariah Carey because the Lord said to me when I was sitting here before Christmas, time's up Mariah Carey. And that's when I started looking at, who's Mariah Carey? Oh, that's right, that woman. Right? Time's up Mariah Carey. And I was watched her tweet. She had her twins on either side of her. The twins were facing the fireworks. She was facing the camera in a silver sparkly dress. Twinkling in little hands that went into devil horns. It was a gif. And one of the kids, the twins, the boy, had a sweatshirt on saying that was Stranger Things. You know, the series Stranger Things. So I saw them on the hill. So it was up here. I saw them on this hill doing fireworks, which is, like I've just mentioned, links to Long Beach, which is where I was for New Year's Eve. So this is a literal dream, guys. Because from then on, 
those fireworks turned into bombs. They were like missiles, and they were landing over here in these rural areas. I didn't look behind to see if they were hitting the city. They were landing over here, and they were coming from sh carrier ships that were here into Perkinui Beach. So let's just say, I'll jump the gun and say it's Long Beach. This is where the beachhead is. They come in. The ships, the communist invasion ships come here. The aeroplane carriers, they're in the air. We're either that or they're just sending these missiles. They're not, I had the sense that they're not destroying the city. They're just taking it. Hence the roadblocks. But they don't care, the people, they don't care about the people. But they want the, they want the infrastructure. So after I see those bombs, and I've seen them roadblock, the, I'm back in the bus, and the little girl starts tagging, and um, pulling on my dress, or whatever I'm wearing. She goes, look, and we're right at the bus door in the steps, and she gives me a view down the hill. You know, like, I can't see the house that I left from, but basically it's round where the house was that I left from. Because I'm in the bus, right, watching from that vantage point of the bus. And these army trucks turn up, they're grey, they're army coloured, There's, there must have been one just full of people, because then all these soldiers are there, and there must be, I would say a dozen, and they all get around with these tiny little spades, the ones you fold over, the army ones, and they start taking the topsoil off something that was pre-dug, it was a pit that they'd pre-dug, and they lifted the topsoil off, and there was some type of roof. And then the other truck, it must have tipped, and all these bodies had fallen out. But I didn't see all that. I could, I did see all that. But when the little girl pulled me, she did it because she saw, and she was looking at the details, and I wasn't. Because I didn't, I was caring for the child. She said, oh, I can see hands, because these bodies were severed. There were bits bits of bodies. Oh, I can see a hand, and I looked, and I could see that there were um, decapitated, well, just amputated bits and full bodies. They were, it was a pre-dug dug pit for these I'm going to say, I haven't said it before, but like victims of war. It's not because of the way they were. They're victims of war. It's a communist invasion. Yes, the V feels like that, what's happened here. We could say it's all symbolic of that. But this dream was a literal invasion. I have gone to the point where Brian is a mariner, and I have talked to him about the harbour, the ships coming in here. You know, it's like God has shown me they're going to use New Zealand as a beachhead. You know how you you take a point and from there you can they can go all from the Pacific from here. Look how vulnerable the South Island is. Okay, so I've since I've had that dream because then it finished. Then I grabbed the girl and pulled her into the bus, and then I woke up. We're very graphic. I didn't want her to see. Then I woke up, and that's when I saw two things. And I better just say that before I leave. I saw the three. I saw the lake. I saw the three kings, and they were wearing like red royal clothes, but it was they looked like Santa outfits, cheap, cheap, and crowns, all of them. And one of them was one of them was in charge, and he had the plans. And the other two were watching. Then they jumped on their horses and rode. Then I saw a mountain, like the mountain I just showed you, that pyramid maybe. It was very dry and dusty. And there was a road winding around it, but it was just the top. It was like just far enough for a bear to walk. I saw it. It was very graphic. It went, like, I saw the bear's paw. Graphic like the horse I saw in the harvest. I saw his paw. It was brown and it had, you know, all the details and the dust went up. 
and I know that from there I managed to see the back of its bum and all its feet, paws, legs, and it was going round the corner to the, and the city, the city was on the other side, as in 